hind everyone myself dr vanna sharma from ajay kumar gurg engineering college the subject which uh, which i am taking that is engineering physics and the topic which today i am going to start that topic is modern physics uh, and my subject code is ks101 t in first semester and ks201 t in second semester uh under this modern physics the various topics or the topics to topics which are mentioned in our syllabus topics are black body radiation then we have beans law which is also an outcome of black body radiation spectrum then we have stephen's law rayleigh jeans law planck's law so all these topics all these mentioned topics that is 1 2 3 and 3 4 and 5 all these topics they are covered under one heading that is black body radiation spectrum after this we have wave particle duality so it is a very interesting fact uh, that as we know uh, that light uh, that can behave like a particle as well as wave why i'm saying that because sometime um, light that shows interference diffraction and polarization phenomena and you know only uh, a wave can so show uh, interference diffraction and polarization and you also know that light can show photoelectric effect compton effect and uh, only if light is behaving like a particle then uh, you can explain that photoelectric effect and compton effect it means the meaning is uh, light is having dual nature so on the similar lines you ha you are having this wave particle duality for material particles so this concept that is concept of matter wave that is uh, associated with this wave particle duality and you know uh, there is a very famous uh, principle in physics as well as in chemistry known as heisenberg uncertain uncertainty principle which describes the motion of microscopic particles that is the outcome of this wave particle duality now how it is the outcome of wave particle duality that we will try to understand under this topic then we will discuss the wave function characteristics and its significance after that uh, wave function characteristic and its significance means as you know um, uh, if i am saying thermodynamics then in thermodynamics there is a function which is known as partition function denoted by z and this thermodynamic function uh, this partition function that can um, uh, that can derive uh, each and every parameter related Uh, to a the thermodynamical system means in thermodynamics if you want to calculate entropy if you want to calculate enthalpy if you want to calculate gibbs free energy then the entire information is given by this partition function it means this partition function is the base of thermodynamics uh, in case of electromagnetics which you have uh, studied in your uh, last unit you know in electromagnetics two important parameters are there one is electric field and the other one is magnetic field and these two they will give you the complete information if you remember then i have discussed about the pointing theorem and pointing vector so if you want to calculate the energy associated with the electromagnetic radiation then the cross product of these two that will give you the flow of energy per unit area it means the entire information is given by e and h similarly in modern physics if you want to um, uh, have the complete information about that system then that information is given by a new function which was proposed by schrodinger that is the reason this function is also known as schrodinger wave function so we are going to discuss that wave function here what are its characteristics and what are what is its physical significance that we are going to discuss under this topic after that we will discuss the time independent and time dependent uh, equation so what is the meaning of that so whenever a microscopic particle is moving it will be associated with wave nature according to this um, uh, concept of matter wave and uh, in order to describe that wave nature you are having a second order partial differential equation uh, as you know in electromagnetics you are having electromagnetic wave equations which are second order partial differential equations similarly in modern physics we are having schrodinger wave equation and that equation was basically generalized on the basis of electromagnetic wave equation and uh, this equation is of two top or uh, two type actually one is time dependent and the other one is time independent so when the energy of part energy of the system is not changing with time that will be your time independent equation and the if energy depends upon time then that will be your time dependent equation right and after that you are having one application of uh, that uh, schrodinger equation and that application is particle in one dimensional rigid box 
so this uh, application we will discuss with the help of schrodinger equation and then we have compton's effect a very important um, uh, concept and it is also uh, an evidence uh, uh, for the particle nature of uh, light so we will discuss this compton's effect that how the intensity or uh, sorry how the wavelength that will change when a highly energetic electromagnetic radiation that will strike uh, with the target material which is rich in electron so that change in wavelength of incident light and scattered light that change in wavelength is compton's shift and this particular phenomena is known as compton's uh, scattering or compton effect so we will discuss this uh, compton's effect here and uh, now today i'm going to start with our first topic which is a black body radiation spectrum so if i'm saying black body then the first thing which uh, comes to your mind that should be that a black body is that particular object which can absorb uh, the complete radiations which will strike on it so if i'm saying i'm having a black object suppose this is a black object or you can say a black body black body doesn't means that is black in color black body means when light will strike on this object then this object will absorb the light radiations irrespective of their wavelength irrespective of their frequency and if a black body is kept at temperature t then that black body is going to emit the radiations of all possible wavelengths means the emissible uh, sorry the absorption power or the absorbity is 100% for a black body and the emissivity is also 100% right so radiation that is incident on an object is partially absorbed and partially reflected this is the case for a normal object uh, at thermodynamic equilibrium the rate at which an ob uh, object absorb radiation is same as the rate at uh, at which it emits it so uh, therefore a good absorber of radiation any object that absorb radiations is also a good emitter a perfect absorber absorb all the electromagnetic radiations incident on it such a such an object is called a black body a black body means that will absorb all the radiations which will strike on it right um, although the black body is an idealized because no physical object absorb 100% of incident radiations what does it means it means that you cannot visualize or you cannot think about uh, an object which is a 100% uh, perfect absorber right so that is an ideal uh, idealistic uh, concept um um we can construct a closed realization of a black body in the form of a small hole in the wall of a sealed enclosure known as a cavity radiator so this is your cavity radiator and this is a small opening through which the electromagnetic radiations or light will enter into this so when light will enter into this as you can see here suppose you are having this radiation this light ray that will strike on this particular part right so at this point when the light will strike some part of the light will be absorbed and some will be reflected let it is a reflected part so it will strike on this particular part again the some part so the inner um, in the, the inner part of this particular cavity uh, cavity radiator that is black means it will absorb the radiations so at this point when light will strike some part will be absorbed some will be reflected again at this point some part will be absorbed some will be reflected so this uh, re absorption reflection will uh, will go on and a time will come when the, all the part of this incident radiation that will be absorbed so you are having a cavity radiator as shown in this figure the inside wall of a cavity radiator are rough and blackened so that any radiation that enters through this tiny ent uh, entrance uh, in the cavity wall becomes trapped inside the cavity so uh, this is not a 100% a black body but this is close to a black body means you cannot say that uh, uh, all the radiations which are entering in the, into this uh, cavity radiator all those radiations or 100% radiations are absorbed there can be some portion a slight part of those radiations which can escape from this cavity radiator so so you can say this is not 100% perfect absorber but you can say this is a realization of a black body right so next part is at thermodynamic equilibrium the cavity wall absorb exactly as much radiation as they emit 
Furthermore, inside the cavity, the radiation entering the opening balanced by the radiation leaving it means whatever the amount of radiations uh, they are entering into uh, that radiation cavity uh, that amount will be exactly equal to when it will be emit the radiations means absorbity and emissivity, emissivity that will be same. The emission spectrum of a black body can be obtained by analyzing the light radiating from that uh, opening. Uh, electromagnetic wave emitted by a black body are called black body radiation means if you are having a black body and if it is kept at temperature T then it will emit the radiations. So those radiations those electromagnetic radiations which are absorbed by that black body those radiations are known as black body radiations and uh, the graph which you are which you can see in this particular slide this particular graph is known as your black body radiation spectrum. So now I am going to discuss this black body radiation spectrum here. So uh, give me one minute here. So first I am going to discuss this black body radiation spectrum. As you can see along x axis you are having wavelength and along y, y axis you can see this is the radiation intensity. So this is the energy of those radiations or you can say this is the intensity of those radiations along y axis which are emitted by a black body. Now we have to observe this graph. As you can see here this graph, this particular graph, this curve is at temperature 2000 Kelvin. So first I am going to discuss this first curve which is observed at 2000 Kelvin. So if you will see this curve which is obtained at 2000 Kelvin, you can see that you are getting radiations of different different wavelengths. You have radiations of this wavelength, you have radiations of this wavelength. So you are getting radiations of different different wavelengths. So that is the first point that when you are keeping a black body at a certain temperature you have kept this black body at 2000 Kelvin it is giving you radiations and it is not giving you radiations of a single wavelength it is giving you radiations of all type of wavelengths uh, it is giving you radiations of short wavelength as well as high wavelength right and if you are going from temperature 2000 to 3000 this is your second temperature like this is T1 and now I am talking about the second uh, temperature of this black body. Now this black body is kept at 3000 Kelvin. So if you will see the curve for 3000 Kelvin again you can observe this thing that you are getting electromagnetic radiations of different different wavelengths. You were getting the radiations of all type of wavelength at 2000 Kelvin and here you can see you are getting wavelength you are getting radiations of all type of wavelength even at 3000 Kelvin and if I will say 4000, 5000 then you are getting radiations of different different wavelengths short wavelength, high wavelength as well as mid wavelength. So for each and every temperature this case is true. So if I am uh, taking the general observations from this particular radiation curve then the first observation is that at every temperature if you are keeping that black body at temperature T1 at T2, at T3, at T4 or at T5 then at every temperature you are getting radiations of different different wavelengths. Second observation is at short as well as long wavelength the energy or you can say the intensity of radiations is low. Is it right? Uh, can you see this particular fact from this graph? What I am saying at low wavelength as well as at long wavelength at low at short wavelength as well as at long wavelength the energy or you can say the intensity of radiations is very small so this is true for each and every temperature at 2000 Kelvin you can see at short wavelength the intensity is small at long wavelength again the intensity of radiations is small if you will see that uh, the temperature of body is 3000 Kelvin here then again you are getting at short wavelength as well as at long wavelength the intensity is small. Again at 4000 Kelvin you can see at short wavelength as well as at long wavelength uh, the intensity is low. So it is true for each and every case. So what is the first point which you have taken from this graph of black body radiation spectrum? The first point is that at every temperature we are getting electromagnetic radiations of 
all possible wavelengths. We are getting radiations of short wavelength. We are getting radiations of long wavelength, right? Second point is, you can see here that at every temperature, if you are taking uh, the temperature of bodies T1 or T2 or T3 or T4, then at every temperature, at sh uh, short and as well as at long wavelengths, uh, the intensity of radiations is small and it is true for each and every case. It is true for 2000 Kelvin. It is also true for 5000 Kelvin. I hope this point is clear. So this is a second uh, observation from this black body radiation spectrum. Now the next point is very interesting. You can see here at 2000 Kelvin, there is a point which is given by this circle, blue circle here. There is a point at which the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation is maximum. As you can see here, at this wavelength, the wavelength which is corresponding to that blue circle, at this wavelength, the intensity of radiation is maximum for this temperature 2000 Kelvin. And at 3000 Kelvin, again you, ha you are having this blue circle here and corresponding to this wavelength, for this wavelength, at 3000 Kelvin, the intensity or uh, energy of this radiation is maximum. So that radiation or you can say that wavelength at, at which you are getting maximum energy or maximum intensity that is known as lambda max. So the wavelength corresponding to which you are getting maximum energy that is no, known as lambda max for that temperature. So you can see here this is lambda max for 2000 Kelvin. You can see here this is lambda max for 3000 Kelvin and you can see this is the lambda max for 4000 Kelvin and you can see for 5000 Kelvin this is lambda max. And what is this lambda max? What is the significance of that lambda max? Lambda max is that particular wavelength uh, in which uh, in which you will you can see that uh, particular object. What is the meaning of this? The meaning is Suppose you are having a particular black body and uh, you are increasing the temperature of that object. So initially it will emit the radiations of different different wavelengths and initially you, you can uh, sense the radiations but you will not be able to see those radiations because it is possible that those radiations are in infrared resin. Because the radiations which are in infrared re resin they are not visible to human eyes, our eyes, they are not sensitive to infrared light. So, you can sense, you can feel that some radiations are coming from that object, but you are not able to see those radiations. And uh, slowly, slowly, when you are increasing the temperature, then a time will come, uh, 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 then that object will start appearing red hot. It means that red color, that is be because of this lambda max, Lambda max means if I am saying the color of sun is yellow, it doesn't mean that uh, sun is giving us only yellow color. Sun is giving us the electromagnetic radiations of all possible wavelengths. But at a certain temperature, uh, that uh, sun is giving uh, 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 light of yellow color with maximum energy. So that is the reason you are getting that sun in that particular color. So, lambda max is that particular wavelength at which you are getting maximum energy. So, it does not mean that you are getting uh, radiations of only lambda max wavelength. You are also getting wave radiations of all different different wavelengths. But because of the maximum energy, that object will appear in this color, in that lambda max. I hope you are getting my point. What I am trying to say here, uh, at every temperature, for 2000 Kelvin, there will be a wavelength at which you will get maximum energy. That wavelength is known as lambda max for 2000 Kelvin. At 3000 Kelvin, there will be a uh, there will be a wavelength which is known as lambda max for which you are, you are getting maximum energy. So that is the lambda max for 3000. Similarly, you are having lambda max for uh, 4000, 5000, and so on. I hope this point is clear. So this is the third general observation related to this black body radiation spectrum. Now the next point which is again a very interesting point here. When you are moving away from 2000 to 3000, 
then this lambda max which corresponds to maximum energy that is shifting towards the shorter wavelength means you are getting lambda max at this wavelength whereas at 3000 kelvin you are getting lambda max at this wavelength when you are moving towards 4000 kelvin then you are getting lambda max at this particular wavelength means now you are moving towards a shorter wavelength side now you are moving to 5000 kelvin then the lambda max that is observed at this particular point means with the increase in temperature of the object that lambda max which is giving you maximum energy it is shifting towards shorter wavelength that is the reason when you are increasing uh, the temperature of a object then with the increase in temperature initially you can feel the heat radiations coming from the object but you are not able to see those radiations reason those radiations will be in infrared uh, reason infrared light that is not um, uh, visible to human eyes so you cannot see those radiations but with the increase in temperature when you are increasing the temperature of object then slowly slowly the wavelength uh, for, for which you are getting maximum energy that is shifting toward the shorter wavelength so when you are moving uh, towards the shorter wavelength from the infrared reason you are moving towards a vis visible range so initially uh, that object with the increase in temperature that will appear red then with the increase in temperature the color of that object will start changing it will change to orange then yellow then green then blue so uh, and then violet it means that lambda max for which you are getting maximum energy that lambda max is shifting towards a shorter wavelength with the increase in temperature so i can conclude this point like this that lambda max is inversely proportional to temperature means with the increase in temperature this lambda max is shifting towards the shorter wavelength reason i hope this point is clear so uh, what are the general observations which were taken from this black this uh, black body radiation spectrum so the first point is first you have to understand what is the meaning of a black body a black body which can absorb all the radiation incident on it as well as if it is kept at a temperature t it can emit the radiations of all type of wavelength right so when you are keeping this black body at a certain temperature t then it is giving you radiations of different different wavelengths so uh, now that uh, those radiations their energy their intensity was plotted against wavelength and that plot which is uh, between um, the intensity or energy of those radiations and wavelength that plot is known as your black body radiation spectrum and that plot was like this so the some uh, general observations were taken from this plot or this black body radiation spectrum and the first observation is that at a certain temperature you are getting electromagnetic radiations of all type of wavelength second observation was at short as well as at long wavelength the intensity of radiations is small and it is true at each and every temperature right next point is at every temperature there will be a wavelength at which you are getting maximum intensity or maximum energy so that wavelength at which you are getting maximum energy or intensity that is known as your lambda max right next point is which is very important point is with the increase in temperature that lambda max is shifting towards the shorter wavelength reason right now the next point which is again a general observation of this particular graph uh if you are uh, seeing this temperature 2000 kelvin then at 2000 kelvin suppose sorry suppose for uh, give me one minute here now see at a temperature 2000 kelvin at this wavelength at this particular wavelength of 1 micrometer this is the energy or intensity of radiation now for same wavelength at temperature 3000 kelvin this is the intensity and at uh, 4000 this is the intensity at 5000 this is the intensity so what is the point which you can conclude from here with the increase in temperature the intensity corresponding to each and every wavelength that intensity will also increase 
it is true at 1 angstrom it is also true at 2 angstrom at 2 angstrom you can see here with the increase in temperature the intensity or the energy of a, that particular wavelength will also increase so this intensity uh, or the energy that does not depends upon um, uh, sorry you can see here with the increase in temperature this there is an increase in the intensity or uh, uh, energy of those radiations so you can say uh, the energy or intensity of the radiations that depends upon the temperature of object if temperature is 2000 kelvin then this is the intensity if it is 5000 then it is the intensity so greater the intensity uh, sorry greater the temperature greater will be the intensity corresponding to a single wavelength i hope this point is clear so this is all about your black body radiation spectrum so what was done uh, these observations which I have told you about this black body radiation spectrum. These observations, they were formulated in the form of some mathematical expressions or mathematical formulas, right? And those observations are, the first one is uh, displacement law, which is also known as Bean's displacement law. And the second one is Stephen's law, right? So how you are getting uh, these two? The intensity distribution among wavelengths of radiations emitted by cavities was studied experimentally at the end of 19th century. Generally, radiation emitted by materials only approximately follows the black body radiation curve. Two important laws were summarized. The first one is your Bean's displacement law and the second one is Stephen's law. So first I am taking this Bean's displacement law. What does it suggest? Bean's displacement law states that the black body radiation curve for different temperatures will peak at different wavelengths. Is it right? For temperature 2000 Kelvin, you are getting that lambda max at a certain wavelength. You are getting lambda max at this, uh, sorry, lambda max at this point. Then you are getting lambda max at this point. Then you are getting lambda max at this point. Means that lambda max is different at different temperatures. I hope this is clear. So the point is, uh, in the black body radiation curve for different temperature, we will get the peak at different wavelengths, right? And that peak, that wavelength uh, corresponding to that uh, peak, that wavelength uh, that uh, uh, is inversely proportional to temperature means with the increase in temperature, that lambda max for which you are getting uh, the maximum energy, that lambda max is shifting towards the shorter wavelength region. It means lambda max is inversely proportional to temperature. So, lambda max is inversely proportional to temperature or in other words, you can say this lambda max into T is a constant, right? And that lambda max in, into T is a constant which is generally denoted by the small b known as Bean's constant and its value is 2.898 into 10 raised to power minus 3 meter Kelvin. So, this is your Bean's displacement law. And it is the outcome of your uh, black body radiation spectrum. So, in this case, lambda max is the position of maximum in the radiation curve. In other words, lambda max is the wavelength at which black body radiation radiates most strongly at a given temperature. I hope it is clear. So, this is your Bean's displacement law. What is the significance of Bean's displacement law? According to this law, uh, that wavelength which is known which is denoted by lambda max for which you are getting maximum energy that wavelength is shifting towards the shorter wavelength uh, so, uh, sorry shorter that wavelength is shifting towards the shorter wavelength region with increase in temperature means if you are having uh, three di different temperatures t1 t2 t3 and t1 is minimum and t3 is maximum then for t1 uh, the lambda max will be maximum and for t3 lambda max will be having minimum value out of these three means that lambda max is shifting towards the shorter wavelength. So, there is an inverse relationship between lambda max and temperature. So, this is your Bean's displacement law or you can say the product of lambda max and temperature is Bean's constant and its value you have to remember this it is 2.898 into 10 raised to power minus 3 meter Kelvin clear. So, on the basis of this uh, you have to solve some numericals like um, uh, suppose you are having, um, mm, you are getting a uh, light of uh, 5500 angstrom for a, from a particular object and you have to find the temperature of that object. So, what I am saying, you have an object and that object is giving you 
the light you are uh, uh, getting the electromagnetic radiations of 5500 angstrom from that object and you have to estimate the temperature of object so how you will estimate the temperature you will estimate the temperature using this displacement law because you are getting uh, the light of 5500 angstrom it means you are getting uh, that um, um, lambda max of 5500 angstrom so lambda max into 2 t will be equal to this you can estimate the temperature so this is the way to estimate the temperature of uh, uh, solar objects right so you have to just know uh, what is the wavelength or uh, uh, from uh, of which color you are getting from that particular object so from that color from that wavelength you can estimate the temperature of the object right so this is very important concept now the next one is stephen's law and that stephen's law states the second experimental relation is stephen's law which concerns the total power of uh, black body radiation emitted across the entire spectrum of wavelength at a given temperature. So, according to this, this power in terms of temperature is sigma a t raised to power 4. Basically, this is your Stephen's law. According to Stephen's law, the energy radiated per unit area per unit time is directly proportional to fourth power of absolute temperature. So, if you have a black body, then the energy radiated by that black body for per unit area, for per unit time is directly proportional to fourth power of temperature. And you know energy per unit time is known as power. So, this is power per unit area and it is directly proportional to t raised to power 4. If you will remove this proportionality sign, you will get a constant. So, what you are getting? You are getting P as sigma A t raised to power 4. What is sigma there? That sigma is your Stephen's constant. This is your Stephen's law. What is Stephen's law? The energy radiated by a perfectly black body for per unit area, for per unit time is directly proportional to fourth power of temperature. Energy per unit time is known as power. So, this is your power per unit area, per unit time and when you will remove this proportionality sign you will get a constant and the name of that constant is Stephen's constant and it is denoted by sigma. Where A is the surface area of a black body, T is the temperature in Kelvin and sigma is Stephen's Boltzmann, Boltzmann constant and its value is 5.670 into 10 raised to power minus 8 watt per meter square per Kelvin raised to power 4. Stephen's law enables to estimate how much energy a star is radiating by remotely measuring its temperature. So, again this particular phenomena is very important and with the help of this you can estimate that how much energy is radiated by a particular star, right. So, in, uh, in astronomy these uh, these two uh, concepts that is Stephen's law as well as your uh, Bean's displacement law, these two are very important, right. I hope up to here everything is clear. So, uh, what I have told you, I have started with black body and uh, I have told you what is the meaning of a perfect black body. Perfect black body means it can completely absorb all the radiations and uh, when it is capped at a temperature T, it can emit the radiations of all so possible wavelengths right but this is not possible to construct a perfect absorber but you can construct a nearly uh, uh, black body just by uh, taking a, a cavity radiator and uh, that cavity radiator is provided with a small opening and when the radiations will emit into that cavity ra radiator it will start uh, reflecting uh, some part of those radiations will be absorbed some will be reflected and that uh, process will go on and uh, a time will come uh, the, the, uh, at which it will absorb all the radiations. So, then it will become a perfect absorber and if that uh, cavity radiator is capped at a temperature T then it will start emitting radiations right. So, in this way that will act uh, and it can emit the radiations of all possible wavelengths which were absorbed during the process of absorption. So, uh, it is perfect absorber as well as perfect radiator right and uh, uh, two important concepts uh, and the next point was uh, uh, your black body radiation spectrum. So, this is your black body radiation spectrum. Uh, in this black body radiation spectrum what you have you have a black body which is kept at temperature T and it is giving you radiations of different different wavelengths. Then we have 
concluded some general observations from this and after that uh, two important laws which were formulated with the help of that black body radiation, radiation spectrum one is beans displacement law which states that lambda max is inversely proportional to temperature and the next one is stephen's law according to which the uh, energy radiated per unit area per unit time is directly proportional to fourth power of temperature right and uh, with the help of this you can estimate the energy uh, energy radiated by a by a star so and uh, with uh, with the help of beans displacement law you can estimate the temperature of an object so these are two important concepts after that uh, 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 we are having two important uh, explanations here uh, one is your rayleigh jeans law and uh, another one uh, which is known as uh, uh, first one is rayleigh jeans law and uh, the second one is the radiation law but these uh, these two these two explanations were given on the basis of classical theory and uh, these uh, these laws they were not able to completely uh, explain that uh, black body radiation spectrum and because of that the classical theory that was modified with a new theory known as planck's quantum theory so uh, in the next lecture we will discuss our planck's quantum theory and uh, how the classical theory failed to explain that entire black body radiation spectrum uh, the meaning of this is in the black body radiation spectrum uh, classical explanations some of the classical explanations they were able to explain the lower part of an, uh, that black body radiation spectrum and some of the laws they were able to explain the higher or longer wavelength uh, part of that uh, black body radiation spectrum but there was no law according to classical uh, explanation which can explain the entire black body radiation spectrum so in order to remove that uh, uh, problem uh, this planck's quantum theory was proposed and on the basis of planck's quantum theory a law was derived which is known as planck's radiation law which can explain explain the entire black body radiation spectrum so that we will discuss in our next lecture so that's all for today thank you so much